All right, well, we're here today at Just Car People Things with the Tophers Civic Type R. And uh, we've been debating for a while. I have a Camaro 1LE, he has a Civic Type R. Uh, we've been debating for a while about who has the cooler sports car. Mine is definitely cooler because it's a V8. I'm just throwing it out there. But uh, this Type R, uh, super fun car. I've had a chance to drive it a little bit. It's on an absolutely silly new set of uh, Michelin. These are the Pilot Sport Cups, right? Cup twos. Yeah. Cup twos, man, these things are just, I threw the car into a corner and it was just like I was on a gumball. It's super fun. Uh, great car to drive though, still very mechanical feeling, a uh, big comfy car, I know we just did a WRX STI drive, this is still very much a full size car, which I really appreciate, you know, you look back here in the back seat, plenty of room, there is uh, plenty of room for uh, someone like myself who's six feet tall to slot into this back seat and have plenty of leg room big inside you've got a nice big hatch behind you that's the only reason i have this instead of your camaro it's true because you have you have a little one and i don't yep. so it's uh <laughs> yeah this is uh but what a uh, what a great look inside uh obviously the seats um back seat definitely a little down market not leather this is just a cloth uh, but does have the nice stitching and can't go wrong with red seat belts that means it's really fast so Super fun car. I, I don't know what else much to say about it. Two liter turbo. It's got a fun valved exhaust. Uh, it's got some really nice looking Brembos on it. Nice set of brakes. And uh, yeah, pop the hood. Let's see what's under the hood. I feel like we need to make a Fast and Furious 2GZ reference. There we go. So K20. I prefer my Honda motor, which is the F20. But uh, you know we all have uh, different preferences, and now you have an S2002. S I do. So uh, we're, we're, bros, there we go. We got it. So super fun car. We just actually took that out uh, and uh, did a little drive around. You know, I can't imagine where all these skid marks came from out here on the ground. But anyways, they look old. They look old. They've definitely been there a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is a turbocharged. You got your turbo up front here, and uh, 315 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque, I think. Okay, it's from it's still front wheel drive. I never specs on my own car. Yeah, I just cars. it's always press cars. Yeah. So I know I was, I was with the STI the other day. I was like, uh, this makes like 300 ish horsepower, <laughs> <laughs> but that one was tuned. So it, it made probably about, about that to the wheels. But uh, yeah, what a great setup. And uh, it sounds really good. It drives really good. It's very mechanical uh, and super, uh, super easy to drive. Um, I was shocked kind of by how easy to drive it was. Um, and I'll say that just from a modern car perspective. Uh, we'll, we'll jump in in a minute and take a spin around. Let's go rip on it before it rains. Yeah, because it's uh, looking a little threatening here. Got it? All right. Black mirror accents, some of the piano black on the car down here on the bottom. Definitely much more grown up than the last Honda Civic Type R. The last Honda Civic Type R had a real uh, boy racer feel to it. Is that the noise that it makes? <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, fabulous. It's kind of cool. I've also been like trying to turn it off, but I think it's, it's, it's the way it is. It's good. <laughs> Six speed manual, multiple drive modes, e parking brake, which we're going to release right there. Nice Alcantara seats. It's got a very deep bucket on the seats. Uh, really feels like it holds you in, very comfortable. I have always had a little bit of an issue with the floating in space dash center thing, but I do appreciate manual controls here, easy to feel very tactile. Uh, I like that a lot. Uh, the other thing I do kind of like about these is that it gives you a place to rest your hand. Um, and that lets you, you know, when you're on a bumpy road, be able to, you know, get your thumb there and actually hit the right button, for example. So 100%. that's, that's something we struggle with here in Michigan. You may not in your, uh, your hometown, <laughs> but uh, nice suite of gauges. Uh, you can cycle through all of that. You obviously can cycle through drive modes. Uh, we've got a comfort mode, a sport, uh, and then we have an individual mode, which of course brings me back to my home, uh, which is the S2000. So here we have an S2000 style uh, sweep, sweep tack, uh, which is very fun. Also shows you a lot of your um, telemetry data off the motor here at the bottom. So oil temp, fuel temp, uh, all that other good stuff, boost. And uh, then of course we have all our R settings. So we've got the engine and plus R mode, steering set to comfort, suspension set to comfort. What What is this your... This is your personal spec for taking the car out and driving it hard. Yeah. Why the comfort versus sport? Is there any ra rationale the for that? The suspension is, well, the adaptive dampers are way over damped from the factory. Gotcha. So it's, comfort is... It's all just that module in the back. I'm actually going to swap an Integra Type S damper module into this car uh, whenever it comes in. It's mm. backward right now. Yeah, but, like all parts these yeah. days. Yep. But yeah, so I see, of course, it's got our engine sound dialed up to full kill. Our gauge set is set to our race mode. Um, but you know, that's funny because on the 1LE Camaro, 
a lot of people think the track setting for the steering way over boosted it just feels like no power yeah, assist it's so heavier it doesn't feel any better a lot of people default it to the sport or to the uh, others i do appreciate that this car much like my one le i know we're not comparing them but much like the one le you can mess with this stuff independently of what mode you're in i know there's a few oems um bmw is very famous for this where it's like it's either all race or it's all not and you can't play with any of the settings independently uh we are nerds and so we like this we're yeah. not going to lie about it at all so let's get it underway obviously we got uh, kind of a nice suite of all your traditional car stuff uh that's in it here kind of a little nice luxury trim the fit and finish inside this car is also really nice um i know it's a honda civic uh, and i know it's easy to say oh my god this is a what forty three thousand dollar forty four thousand dollar honda civic yeah uh but I'll tell you, the fit and finish on it, you wouldn't know getting into it. The the feel of things, kind of the way, the comfort level of things, uh, I think it's definitely a car that is punching a lot above its weight class in terms of um, uh, its fit and finish inside, which I think is really helpful. Immediately, that was like the biggest thing I noticed about these cars, is they just feel so well built, even more so than the regular Civics. Yeah, they're definitely some real time and attention, and it, it reminds me of the S2000 like that that when Honda or NSX, when Honda goes to build a proper performance car, they are very, very serious about making the fit and finish really good. And stuff holds up very well too. We were just in your uh, new S2000 with 140 some thousand miles on it. And it, feels, it felt just like mine, it felt absolutely great. Um, and that just goes to show you that a little bit of extra love was put into, uh, time attention was put into uh, their performance cars, which I always appreciate. So one of the other things I'll mention, uh, and Chris just mentioned this, the uh, Honda software suite that's in this car has a log R mode. And this shows you all your cool telemetry data from the car, which is very fun. You can set lap times. Set lap times. A to B or circuit style. We're doing that right here right now, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, We're timing you on the route, on the token yeah. route. So we'll just huck this thing in here. Oh man, this thing is really something on these tires. And that front wheel drive just, just really digging in. It's got brakes too. <laughs> it's got brakes too. Good brakes. The brakes are good. It's not quite as stiff of a pedal as my one Ali. Of course, this is a lot lighter. What is this weigh? 3,200? Yep. Yeah, the one Ali is 36, 38. But yeah. Very well damped, really controlled getting on the highway. That's just absolutely wonderful. I could see how you could really hustle this thing on a track. It was very, nice. very comfortable. Oh, man. Yeah, and awesome. you know, the fun part about it is you can come be, you know, the exit ramp, entrance ramp assassin, and then you can flip this thing over. So let's go back over to, back to comfort. And it kind of settles right down. The exhaust note seems to dial back a little bit. The throttle is a little less linear, a little easier to deal with. And you can cruise along here at 75 miles an hour. You mentioned recently you got almost 34 miles a gallon. Yeah, I was driving, driving like a grandma, but what? Uh, and then, 34 miles a gallon on the way to the track, it was solid. Yeah, and that's on a very, very sticky set of tires. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah, exit here and then we'll go left and come back. Yep, just do the loop. So, yeah, it's, it's you know, to be in a car like this that has a lot of room inside of it, that has all the performance capabilities, still comes with a six-speed, manual transmission you got the great auto rev match there i don't have to touch the uh touch the gas pedal for it to pick the next gear down which is to me still magic <laughs> but uh total witchcraft but easy car to drive fun car to drive fast has room for the family gets 30 plus miles a gallon if you're being nice to it uh which is crazy you know you think about that in terms of the performance car world uh that's that's really impressive um my one elite does Geez, if I'm behaving uh, on the highway and not really going terribly, it'll do about 24 or five miles a gallon on the highway, which is not terrible. Yeah, for me, it's great. Um, obviously that sixth gear on those cars, just sort of, you're just much like a Corvette, you're just sort of just above idle yeah. when you're sitting there uh, and rolling along. You have how many miles on this now? Do you know? About 4,000 miles. 4,000 miles. Yeah. And if you had no, no reliability issues, no nagging problems. No problems, no. They had a seat recall and uh, replace one of the rails, I think, welds were breaking. So I wanted to get that done before I took it out to track. Yep. But 
anything that you really don't like? Uh, we don't like that it doesn't have a handbrake. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. manual. No manual well, e-brake. No fun to drive in the winter. Yeah. But, uh, Man, that turning is great. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it just, on these tires too, I mean, we're just kind of gumballing it around <laughs> this. It's, this feels like we're on like tar, uh, which is very entertaining. I think the suspension is a little bit too stiff. You can beat this guy. Oh, yeah, we sure can. Super. But, uh, yeah, any nagging complaints with it? You don't like the lack of a manual parking, parking brake, brake right here? I think suspension's just too stiff. Uh, yesterday, it grabbed even in comfort mode all day long. It was just bouncing around from some of the corners. And I've actually disabled the active dampers in this car. Mm -hmm. The suspension is, like, completely open and, and in as soft as possible setting. No voltage going through the dampers, and it's very soft. So there's a capability there to make the suspension soft. They just keep dialing it up. So I think yeah. the Tegra Type S dampers are going to be about perfect. And if you really wanted to do well by this chassis, you'd probably go to a set of yep. two loaders. But uh, there's some there's some adjustability in there. I think, I think we'll get it right eventually. Yeah, for sure. So. It's uh, it's so easy to, to hustle in. That's the you know the thing I'll say about a lot of modern performance cars. You know, gone are the days of we were S two thousand in this corner. You know, even at medium speed, letting off the throttle, you can feel it want to just snap around on you. And this just just dives right in, and it's so controlled. There's so much grip. There's so much grip. Just lean into these bolsters. Yep, and it just pinch into the seat. Very lovely. So super fun. We're gonna haul off a little bit here so we don't find this guy in the Mini Cooper, uh, which we certainly would have. Uh, there's a turnaround up here? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the auto rev match programming is a big improvement. It's, it's really, yeah, and yeah. that was an issue on those. And, um, you know, beyond the appearance on the FK8 and sort of what they look like, um, yeah, which is to say they look like they went to Pet Boys and slapped a bunch of parts on the FK, the last generation uh, Civic Type R. I kind of liked the FK in red and black. It looked yeah. like a touring car. Right, it was very like obnoxious, width, very DTM-y DT kind yeah, of. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is super fun. But, um, not you know, I had a debate when I was car shopping about a BRZ or going to an FK, uh, FK8, and it was like, well, the minor problem is, is that when I pull in in a BRZ, it looks like a budget Porsche. <laughs> And when I pull in in a Civic Type R, it looks like I just pulled in in a Civic that just left the AutoZone parking lot. <laughs> and that's a, you know, that is a consideration for, you know, for work and for driving a car in and something to think about. This is much more refined. This is a car that someone could get in and see then they wouldn't, they didn't see the Honda badge on it. They wouldn't necessarily know it's a Honda. Yeah, go for it. Do it again. Lap two. Lap two. Push oh. harder. I, you got grip. I, uh, all right, well, there we go. We, can, we have grip now. Yeah, the rain is only mildly terrifying. I think Chris is just enjoying being a chauffeur in his own yeah, car. That's good. Have you ever have you ever driven this? Uh, is this have you ever driven this uh, as a, or ridden it as a passenger? Oh yeah, yeah, a few times. So you can just lean on those. Wow, you can just stand over that front left or right corner with the brakes and just really haul onto it. That's all right. Good shot. You lost out. I mean, it's it's an X40. It's, it's a 45. Like, it should be fast, right? Like, it's a, isn't that the B58 powered? Yeah. So. Just dip into that boost. 22 PSI, a boost right there, folks. Can't be mad about that. Drove the uh, STI the other day, at 18 STI, and uh, it topped out around, it's tuned, topped out around 17 and a half, 18. And we were joking that when you get to 20, you get a free set of ring lands. <laughs> so it's uh, that EJ257 motor uh, in the WRX STI, which is frankly a car that you could absolutely cross shop with this, right? Uh, full size sedan, big comfy car, easy to drive, you know, advantage of all wheel drive there, right? If you really are living in an area where you feel desperate for all wheel drive, uh, maybe you got that steep driveway or a lot of snow, a lot of ice, you need those snows. Uh, you you don't, don't want uh, the front wheel drive that's on th this, but man, the level of refinement in this is night and day compared to compared to the uh, STI. Oh yeah, big time. And yeah. part of that's the, the tuning e too. The tuning EJ257, you know, obviously is from about 1900. Uh, the the motor that's in the WRX STI is, I think the original 
the original run of that motor was now probably what 20 years old 25 yeah, years old right, yeah. so it's it, it it's very different than because I had an Evo 9 what I got a kick out of about it was the Evo was the you know the Evo 9 is the end run of the 4G63 dev right so that's a 2006 or 7 car speaking of kind of cool I like the there you go all right up uh, but a 2006 or 7 car and that motor had been produced for what 26 years at that point 25 years and that motor seemed to get better and better and what struck me about the Subaru is that the motor didn't seem to get better and better. It just like the EJ257 is like time eternal. Yeah. So easy car to kind of get around a parking lot too. Oh yeah. Yeah, just you know, good sight lines, uh, easy to see out of, comfortable. Yeah, great visibility. Great visibility. We'll park like most people park, which is across four spots. Mm -hmm. And uh, parking. There's your and brake hold is for a hill. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So you got a little bit of everything. It already has a little bit of hill start assist built in. Like the is... Honda logo and everything. Lovely. Yes, sir. Absolutely great car to drive. Well, and that was a quick drive of the new Civic Type R. And uh, man, you can't go wrong with this car. I uh, I hate uh, being the person who drives cars and always tells you like, this is such a great car. This is the coolest thing ever. But uh, genuinely, this is a really fun, fun car to drive. Can't say enough th nice things about it. Thank you for letting me take it for a spin. Uh, and uh, it, I, I really enjoyed it. I'd put it on my list. Um, if I'm gonna one day go away from my big V8 Camaro 1LE, uh, SS 1LE, I would totally think about this as a car to replace it and keep it on that list. I see values staying very high over the course of the course of these cars lives. I don't see a lot of depreciation, um, particularly in the, the white. It's just such a nice looking car. The black accents, uh, the red brakes, the red interior. It's a really nice package from Honda, uh, really well thought out, and I uh, think it's worth uh, checking out and uh, taking a spin in one if you, can, uh, if you can manage it. So thanks for joining today. I appreciate you guys liking and subscribing to Just Car People Things. Have a great day.